Hello, Rick here with a personnel file. This series looks into the Starfleet career and personalities of Star Trek's iconic characters. This time we're digging up information on Captain Benjamin Sisko, the commander of Deep Space Nine, hero of the Dominion War, emissary of the Prophets, and puncher of Qs. That's a lot of titles for one man and a wide array of responsibilities to cover of varying demands. As usual, this video draws from Memory Alpha primarily, but includes some Memory Beta content where applicable, and occasional events where context is lacking have been amended to fit continuity where justifiable. Born in New Orleans, Earth 2332, Benjamin Lafayette Sisko was the son of Joseph and Sarah, and their only child. Joseph Sisko ran a restaurant while Sarah was in fact under the influence of a non-corporeal being later identified as a prophet or wormhole alien. A year after Benjamin's birth, the prophet left Sarah and she left the family. Joseph Sisko remarried and fathered a daughter, Judith, and two brothers, Samuel and Aaron. During his childhood, Sisko worked in the kitchen and often learned the piano. These two interests he would rediscover later in his life. In 2350, he applied to Starfleet Academy and was accepted. Here he took the path of engineering, showing notable aptitude for ship design. He made friends with fellow student Calvin Hudson and took a recreational interest in history and baseball. He also showed a talent for combat and earned the nickname Deadeye on the phaser rifle targeting range, performing trick shots, a fact he would often embellish in his youth. He also captained the wrestling team in 2351. A knock to his pride came, however, when he challenged the Vulcan student Solok to a match and was bested easily. In 2353, he was assigned to Peleus Station as part of his training under the rank of Ensign. During this assignment, he established a long-time mentorship and friendship with noted Trill Ambassador Curzon Dax. Another assignment later that year saw him visit the fledgling Federation Embassy on Romulus. His final posting before graduation was on the Excelsior-class USS Livingston NCC 34099. He graduated from the Academy in 2354 and met Jennifer DeWitt on leave before his final official posting, who he would later marry. His first posting was to the Lunar Colony, New Berlin, where he was assigned to operations as an ensign. A year later, Jennifer gave birth on Earth to Jake Sisko, and Benjamin was promoted to lieutenant. Not for having a kid, that doesn't get you a promotion. During the short-lived Zenkethi War, Sisko was assigned to the USS Okinawa NCC-13958, another Excelsior class, as an engineer, after being rescued from Renaga alongside fellow officers Lt. Tuvok and Dr. Salar. Shortly after this, he was promoted to Lieutenant Commander and made the XO of the Okinawa by Captain James Layton, which included a reassignment to the Command Division. In 2366, he transferred to the USS Saratoga, NCC 31911, as the first officer, when its former senior staff, including Captain Marta Jedlicka, were reassigned. Sisko's family also transferred with him. In 2367, the Battle of Wolf 359 occurred, and the Saratoga was one of the 40 vessels mobilised to deflect a Borg incursion headed by Locutus of Borg, the assimilated form of Captain Jean-Luc Picard. The resulting conflict saw the destruction of 39 of the starships, including the Saratoga. Sisko escaped with his son Jake, but Jennifer was lost when the ship was destroyed. For a long time after this, he understandably hated the Borg and blamed Picard. Starfleet reassigned Sisko back to the Sol system and his engineering background. Command experience and, let's face it, personal motivations made him the perfect candidate to head up a new Starfleet project to create Escort-class combat vessels, starting with the Defiant. He was assigned to head the project at Utopia Planitia, which saw the production of a single prototype in 2368. During field tests, the vessel proved overpowered for its size, and the project was postponed, possibly in favour of the more conservative Sabre class. In 2369, he began to consider resignation from Starfleet in favour of building orbital habitats. However, James Layton, now an admiral, nominated him for the position of commander of Deep Space Nine, which he accepted. The orders were relayed, tensely, by Captain Picard, along with a promotion to commander. This posting was to aid Bajor in rebuilding after the withdrawal of the Cardassians, and to help them prepare for a Federation membership. Shortly after his assignment began, he was named Emissary of the Prophets by Kai Opaka, a religious figure in Bajoran culture. 
riddled with prophecies and expectations, a fact that made him uncomfortable. He, alongside Lieutenant Jadzia Dax, discovered the Bajoran wormhole and ordered DS9 to shift position to claim it for Bajor. They also made first contact with the wormhole aliens, who the Bajorans identified as the Prophets. This seemed to match ancient Bajoran scripture and cemented Sisko's place as an iconic religious figurehead in, of their culture. He soon began to assist in transforming Deep Space Nine into a hub of trade and commerce, which benefited Bajor and granted many species access to the unexplored Gamma Quadrant through the wormhole. In 2370, the official ending of the Cardassian border wars occurred and several colonies were signed over to the Cardassians. This led to the formation of the Marquis, its members including his former friend Cal Hudson. Also in 2370, first contact with the Dominion is established. Not long after, Commander Sisko convinces Starfleet to reinstate the mothballed prototype USS Defiant, NX-74205, as a permanent defence for DS9. He is assigned as its commanding officer. During a temporal incident, he assumes the identity of Gabriel Bell to maintain the continuity of the timeline of 2024. Sisko was promoted to captain in 2371. Sisko was temporarily reassigned as Starfleet Head of Security by Admiral Layton to help expose Dominion changelings in Starfleet. However, this position was relinquished when it became clear that Layton was attempting to reform Starfleet into a more military structure and enforce harsher policing of its civilian population. Later in 2372, he was also betrayed by Michael Eddington, who joined the Marquis, and then Cassidy Yates, a woman who he was becoming romantically involved with. Though to a lesser extent. In order to capture Michael Eddington in 2373, Sisko poisons the atmosphere of the planet Solosis III, forcing the idealistic Marquis to give himself up. Later that year, Sisko is assigned to an undercover mission in Klingon territory to expose a changeling infiltrator. In 2373, the Second Battle of DS9 occurs, with Sisko evacuating Starfleet personnel from the station at the opening hours of the Dominion War. He fought numerous battles from the bridge of the USS Defiant until in 2374 he was assigned to be the adjutant to Vice Admiral William Ross on Starbase 375. From here he acted as a tactician for Federation offences against the Dominion. He spearheaded Operation Return, the assault to retake DS9 and the Bajor Sector from Dominion control then used his position as emissary to convince the Prophets to deny the Dominion reinforcements access to the wormhole. Towards the end of 2374, the first Battle of Chin Toka occurred with an Allied victory. However, the Bajoran wormhole collapsed and Lieutenant Jadzia Dax was murdered by a power wraith possessed Dukat. Sisko was deeply affected by this, having grown accustomed to the role of emissary and the loss of a close friend. He was granted official leave when he returned to New Orleans. In 2375, three months into his leave, he embarks on a self-imposed mission to Tyree to locate the Orb of the Emissary and the Prophet within. This Prophet was the one which had possessed Sarah in order to conceive Benjamin to begin with, revealing to him his predestined nature as Emissary. The release of this Prophet restored the wormhole and Sisko returns to Starfleet. The Second Battle of Chintoka occurs five months later, during which the USS Defiant is destroyed by Breen forces. The USS Sao Paulo, NCC 75633, is rechristened the USS Defiant and reassigned to Captain Sisko. Sisko goes on to lead the assault on Cardassia, alongside Admiral Ross and Chancellor Martok. This victory is soon followed by the surrender of the Dominion Alpha Quadrant forces to the Federation, and the Treaty of Bajor being signed on Deep Space Nine. However, Captain Benjamin Sisko departs for the Fire Caves on Bajor, but never re-emerges. He is currently listed as MIA. Cassidy Yates has stated that she had a Prophet-induced vision of Benjamin Sisko, who claimed the Prophets had saved his life and that he would return eventually. This concludes the current timeline for Benjamin Sisko. Personally, I'd like to believe that he would indeed return, perhaps in time for his daughter's birth, and thematically it paints the Prophets as more good orientated beings. You know, saving Sisko, opposing the Power Wraiths who allowed Dukat to die. Benjamin Sisko is a methodical builder. He started Starfleet as an engineer in Starship design, literally a builder, and went on to construct the USS Defiant. 
His hobbies include cooking, of which he was similarly methodical, and he constructed a working replica of the Bajoran solar sail ship. This last feat mixed his love of history in general with his growing fondness of Bajor. He built metaphorical bridges too, especially with Bajor, and he was originally assigned to Deep Space Nine to aid in the rebuilding of a struggling civilization. He acted as the bridge between them and the Prophets too, explaining the mortal concepts to the wormhole aliens, again, building bridges. Speaking of Bajor, his role as emissary placed an unusually heavy load on his shoulders. Starfleet genuinely did not like the importance of this role landing on one of their own, as this skirted with their non-interference laws. However, the position was carefully observed and tolerated. No doubt Bajor's position as a potential Federation member helped. Personally, we see him come to terms with the role, as he makes it less about the position of power and more about the people around him, a very compassionate approach, and the sign of a good leader. Loyalty is an incredibly important virtue for Sisko, to see in others and himself. He considers his longtime friend Cal Hudson a traitor to the Federation for joining the Marquis, and becomes obsessed with capturing Michael Eddington for the same. When Admiral Layton is seen to betray the principles of the Federation, he condemns the act and attempts to stop it. This moral centre can perhaps be seen as hypocritical, as on several occasions, Sisko himself has twisted the Federation's values to achieve a goal, both with the poisoning of Solosis III and the fabrication of evidence to persuade the Romulans to attack the Dominion. However, he considers both of these instances the toughest decisions of his life, and despite standing by these choices, feels a great deal of guilt. If anything, this serves to enforce his notion that loyalty and moral convictions are of great importance. With the death of his first wife, Jennifer, we see that Sisko fell into a dark place, and his career mirrors this. He returns to the Sol system, and goes on to design a ship for killing Borg. Not only a starship, but a bona fide warship. Not a galaxy class that just happens to be powerful, but a low-profile, severely overpowered, genuine warship. When the project is cancelled, he almost resigns from Starfleet, considering another career in construction, but it's only his old friend Leighton who assigns him a role to help him heal another people, and I think intentionally, to heal himself. Having lost family, he understands its importance and how important emotional bonds are. This ties in with all of his actions, as emissary, as a father, and on the personal level that he takes betrayal. Since his academy days, we see that he enjoys a fight. Well, not quite. He enjoys competition, and in his youth that was found in wrestling, then baseball, the latter of which he becomes a total nerd about. This competitiveness seems to motivate him, sometimes to obsession, and it takes his friends to rein him in, as he frequently forms rivalry of varying severity. Solok, Ducat, Eddington, but this same quality enables him to tackle even the most daunting of tasks with a gusto. Overall, Benjamin Sisko represents a strong character, but a complex one, complete with flaws. Equally compassionate and dedicated, he is nonetheless willing to make personal sacrifices if it ensures the betterment of others. I think this man best exemplifies the philosophy of the whole being greater than the sum, as without any of these elements, his character crumbles. It seems Sisko's life, unlike Picard's, is far easier to piece together in a linear fashion, and I was surprised at how concise his story was, and how almost nothing was wasted. Some good episodes concerning Sisko are In the Pale Moonlight, for a serious side, Explorers, for a lighter tone, and Rapture, for a tripping Sisko trying to balance his role as emissary with Federation responsibilities. This is only three from a whole series of great character moments though. Thanks for listening to this personnel file, and if you've got a request, suggest it below. Thanks again. I've been Rick, and goodbye.